Well, let's get back to the No campaign that has been launched today of sorts. This is the No campaign on the Voice to Parliament. We've seen a press release with some uh, details, but we're not going to hear from this coalition today. Uh, let's go live now to Thomas Nam. He is an Uluru Statement signatory. Thomas, thanks so much for your time. Uh, you've uh, read these couple of pages, seen some uh, reporting today. Warren Mundine, Jacinta Price uh, leading this No campaign. What do you think of their arguments? Well, I think, you know, all views are important in a democracy, but what's important is that there's been a process for Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people uh, to consider the best way forward. Uh, the process that led to the making of the Uluru Statement from the heart, for one, was really important, plus decades of work uh, on constitutional recognition. And what Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people have clearly said in the Uluru Statement is that we see constitutional recognition through a voice of parliament. And mm. I think um, for the people to be recognised, uh, it's important to listen to us about how we seek to be recognised. What do you say to those who seem to be putting the Uluru Statement from the heart to one side because it didn't represent all Indigenous tribes? We're a community like any other that has a, a great variety of perspectives. Um, but the Uluru Statement was a, a well-formulated process that involved our people from all different backgrounds, not just the loudest of us that are used to being heard, but the quieter advocates that are doing the hard work on the ground. It included many remote and rural people, a, a majority really, uh, from our remote and, and rural uh, places that we live and, um, and look after country and uh, raising our families and, and struggling. Um, and so I think those um, various perspectives are fine, but uh, you know, we have had a process. There is uh, clear support for this from the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander populace. And, um, and I think um, most Australians will support listening to us. Um, kind of scary period though, isn't there? Um, with these campaigns going, um, they are scare campaigns. And that's why I use the word uh, scary. Do you think without the detail um, of how this voice will actually work is now being filled uh, by not an insignificant amount of people that say, well, this might happen and this might happen and it might change the way Australia is governed and we need to recognise migrants. Do you see that as a problem or will, will Australia as a whole see through that? Well, I think the truth can carry us through in this. You know, we're talking about constitutional recognition here and the provision for the constitution is quite a simple one. It's really about establishing the principle that Indigenous people should be listened to. It's really about the principle of fairness as well as recognition for Indigenous people. And, you know, in a representative democracy, um, you know, uh, representative bodies are not that unusual. And, uh, and I don't think the, the reality is a scary thing. In fact, mm. I think it enhances our democracy. And we know that when Indigenous people are listened to about the solutions in their communities, then that is when things um, are, are gotten right. Um, it's when we're not listened to that things go wrong. It's, yeah. when, um, it's when we're ignored that things go wrong. And so this is a really important uh, uh, change in this country to ensure that Indigenous people that are normally not heard um, I heard loud and clear about the solutions and there's some consistency um, throughout the political cycle, regardless of who's mm. in government, that we can consistently come together, uh, under, have informed discussions amongst ourselves, uh, use the best evidence and science and then mm. put forward, um, you know, in, in the best possible way, how governments can resolve these issues. And this is a very practical reform. We have a, a problem in this country and I think Australians are, are tired of symbolism, just as Indigenous people are tired of symbolism. We want something very practical. And in a democracy, again, a voice is a very practical thing. Influence over the making of policies and laws is a very practical thing, and it can only improve uh, not only our country and our identity, but also mm. the uh, Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander lives. So just quickly, Thomas, the voice, will it improve the situation, for example, that we're seeing in Alice Springs right now? Oh, absolutely it will. You know, I mean, uh, uh, the Uluru Statement says it quite clearly where it says proportionately we're not, a, we, you know, proportionately we're the most incarcerated people on the planet. We're not an innately criminal people. We're not born 
more criminal than any other human beings. We're human like everyone else, but there has been some uh, a long history of ignorance of Indigenous communities, disempowerment, um, failed policies and harmful laws. And we can, we can fix those things because these are a structural and political problem. And when Indigenous people have a voice merely to advise the parliament in a transparent way, mm. that is how we'll see change in other springs. And it'll be generational. It won't be fixed overnight, but that consistency and coherency of a voice is really important. It's, it's, it's more than symbolism. Thomas Mayor, thanks so much for your time. I have a feeling that we'll be speaking to you uh, frequently over the next uh, couple of weeks and months ahead. Thanks so much. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thomas Mayor.